Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Rich Life Podcast. Jordan here. Grab your Bible, grab a cup of coffee, and get settled in for a couple minutes as we do our Monday morning devotion together. This week, we are looking at the spiritual gift of prayer. What does it look like to have a strong prayer life and how you can start having a stronger prayer life after listening to this this morning? Let's get started. So we have an awesome uh, opportunity when it comes to prayer and it comes to communicating with God. Now, prayer is the act of communicating with God, the act of spending time with God. And we're going to further define it in just a moment. But prayer is also one of the most uh, misunderstood disciplines in our modern world and our modern church and modern context. Prayer isn't just something you do once a week. It's not something you do on a Sunday morning during worship service. Prayer is also uh, not always a very nice thing to do when it comes to what prayer is in the Bible. So what is prayer according to the Jewish tradition? Well, it's very simple. And I'm getting this from Chabad.org and some other Jewish uh, commentators. The Hebrew root, the Hebrew word tefillah is generally translated into English as the word prayer. But this is not an accurate translation. For to pray means to beg, beseech, implore, and the like. For which we have a number of Hebrew words which more accurately convey this meaning. Our daily prayers are not simply requests addressed to God to give us our daily needs and nothing more. Of course, such requests are always included in our prayers, but by and large, our prayers are much more than that. And that is what we have to understand today. Prayer is actually, can be an argument. It can be a lament. It can be something we take to God in complaint to him. We see this quite a bit in the book of Psalms. We see a few Psalms that are Psalms of lament. We also see in the book of Job, we have Job who is complaining to God because he literally lost everything. Job is a guy who was the ultimate super God person. He sacrificed every day. He sacrificed on behalf of his children. He, uh, he had a bunch of uh, wealth and land and, and farmstead because of his faith, because he was a hard worker. He was like the ultimate Christian, but he lost everything because God let Satan take everything away from him. He lost his family. He lost his kids. He eventually would lose his wife. Uh, he lost all of his wealth and he still decided to worship God. But during those times of prayer with God, he would also complain. He would be like, What's going on? Why is this happening? And that is something we need to consider. Now, prayer is more than just spending time with God and giving him requests. It's, it's a, it's a way of interacting with God. And it's a way that God has become not just transcendent, but imminent, which means God is close to us. The greatest example of prayer in the new Testament is with Jesus and specifically the Garden of Gethsemane. So you can open your Bibles to Matthew 26 verses 31 to uh, 45. We're going to read portions of this. When Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane, he said, sit here while I go over to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. So there you go. He's grieving something. He, he doesn't know if the cross, like he, what he, what he's grieving is the, the fact that he has to go to the cross soon, that he has to sacrifice his life. And that's his human side coming out. And he's going to go to God with this grief and with this lament, uh, even for the world, because he's worried about the world too here. So Jesus actually goes to prayer, just like we read it in in Chabad.org. He's going to implore, he's going to beseech, he's going to go to God in argument. He went on a little farther and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I will want your will to be done, not mine. So here Jesus is actually saying, is there another way 
that I that we can save the world that doesn't require me to go to the cross. He's actually saying that. He's saying that the burden is too much. He's showing this is one of his most human moments that we have in scripture. And this is why Jesus is so relatable because he didn't sin. He's not sinful. He sinned less, but he all, but he still had these human moments. And he's going to God in prayer to remedy this. He knows what needs to be done, but he, he feels like he can't do it. So what's his answer? What's his solution to the problem? Prayer. Spending time with God. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. Because remember, he told the disciples to pray while well, they weren't listening. They fell asleep. And that's how terrible humans are. Couldn't you w- watch with me for even one hour, he said? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left for a second time and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. Then he returned to them again, found them asleep again, and, and for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went to pray a third time. Then he came to the disciples and said, Go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But look, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. And that's when he is betrayed and he goes to the cross. You know what? This is incredible scripture because this is why prayer is so important. He literally says, you can go ahead and sleep, but you're not going to be prepared for the time to come. You can go ahead and do this, but it's undisciplined behavior and you're going to fall into temptation. Jesus's answer to temptation is prayer, spending time with God meditating, listening for God. And remember Jesus here, he isn't just giving God requests. He's not just telling God to fix the problem. He's going to God and he's saying, God, what's your will? If this can happen another way, let it happen. And then he sits there and he listens and he prays. He tells the disciples to do the same. The disciples fell asleep. So we can, we can, we can see that there's time that has passed here. Because in order to fall asleep, you have to be sitting there for you know longer than five minutes. So there, there, there's been time that has passed, which means Jesus is spending a large amount of time with the Lord here. So I want to challenge you today. How much time have you spent with God in prayer? Not just giving God requests, not just throwing stuff at him, but when's the last time you said to God, here I am speak to me. And you spent that time listening. You should be spending at least an hour per day with God. And if that sounds like a lot, well, guess what? One day you're going to die and you're going to leave this earth and all the things you love on the earth are going to be left behind. And then you're going to be with God. So why not spend that time with our eternal father? If we're going to spend the rest of our time after we die with them. It just makes sense. We just get so bogged down with the things of the world. We get so bogged down with our busy schedules and we we push it aside, we push it aside and it's because we don't get a tangible thing right away every time we pray. But we have to approach prayer in a different way. Set some time aside every single day this week. Start with 10 minutes and then next week go to 15. Next week go to 20 minutes. Set time aside every single day And go into your own Garden of Gethsemane and argue with God. Listen to God. Give him requests. Tell him to speak to you. Ask him to reveal himself to you. And give him the time every single day to practice your spiritual discipline of prayer. Jesus did it. And he did it before he did the greatest action the world has ever seen. And if that means we need to be doing it as well. Because if Jesus did it before the biggest thing he's ever done, then it must be the most important thing in our lives to spend that time with God and to pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for ever listening today. Pray that we have lots of fun this week and give us the ability and the discipline to set time aside, to argue with you, to pray with you, to meditate, to listen, and to give you our requests, not just one way of prayer, not just one type of prayer. Lord, let us become masters of prayer, masters of spending time with you and setting that time aside every single day. We thank you so much in your holy and precious name. Amen. Have a great week, everyone.